Well, we've talked about the incredible rollout of Vice President Kamala Harris uh, and as a presidential uh, candidate now. She is the presumed uh, nominee for the Democratic Party. Um, and, you know, we've talked about um, what, what does she have to do while her first few rallies have been really successful. Um, huge turnout and people uh, in the Democratic side have been very happy with the way she's presenting. Um, what happens going forward, though? Because there's the excitement now, but as we get deeper into the campaign, what is, what is the path, uh, the strategy to actually win this? Um, the other part of this is figuring out who a running mate is going to be. Uh, there is, you've seen a pretty uh, impressive list of possibilities for her to choose from. By the way, there were polls taken, uh, there, at what, a poll taken, um, where um, they polled Democrats to see who they wanted. You know who the top person was? Uh, I haven't seen the latest poll. It was Pete Buttigieg. Really? Yeah. Wow, man. 21%. If, boy, if we could speak to Pete Buttigieg, that would be kind of cool. Ask and you shall receive. Wow, you are that good, Harvey. Uh, joining us right now, possible uh, VP uh, with Kamala Harris is Pete Buttigieg. Welcome back to TMZ Live. How are you doing? Good, good to be with you. Thanks for having me. It's really good having you here. I I I've been watching you a lot. You have been making the rounds. Um, let's start with this, because I don't think I'm going to get a direct answer on this anyway. <laughs> what are the qualities that Kamala Harris should be looking at in a vice president. <laughs> uh, see what you're doing there. So look, I, I, <laughs> nobody knows more about how to do that than, than she does, right? She is the vice president. She's been through that process. And I know she'll create a process that makes sense for her uh, and uh, uh, you know, yield somebody that, that uh, she wants to be on a ticket with. Uh, what I'll say is you know, the, the, the overall strategy here is to make sure that we pull together as a democratic team. And I've been amazed. You know, Look, our party is famous for being fractious, big tent. We disagree with each other within our family on everything. It's been amazing in the last, uh, really in the first 24 hours to watch everybody come together in excitement, not just determination, but I think a, a real excitement with a real level of warmth around her candidacy. And uh, obviously I'm, I'm, I'm one of millions of Democrats who, who feel that excitement. Well, oh, I thought he was going to see at the end that you said I'm one of, and then I you know. said millions. I was like, oh, no, no, no. I mean, you are actually, we're, we have a pretty good record going here this week. We have uh, now two potential candidates, uh, VP candidates, um, and neither of you, the first was Wes Moore, uh, neither of you, you know, you're far too humble to actually say that it's uh, something you, you want, but if you were to be uh, selected in that role, um, how would that, uh, what would your strategy be going out on the campaign stump uh, to win the election? I mean, my strategy is going to be the same no matter what, and, and that is to tell the world about the kind of leader that Kamala Harris is, but also just I think, to remind the country that they already agree with her and disagree with Donald Trump on issue after issue after issue. You know, with, with all the personality stuff uh, and, and all of the kind of things that swirl in the media, it's, it's easy to overlook that. So let's just remember, you know, Donald Trump's big economic policy is tax cuts for the rich. Uh, Americans disagree with them, and they agree with Kamala Harris, who thinks that uh, the rich ought to pay their fair share. Uh, Americans believe in a woman's right to choose. Donald Trump demolished the right to choose. It's one of the few promises from his campaign that he actually kept. Obviously, Kamala Harris has been a defender of a woman's right to access abortion care. Uh, you can go through issue after issue guns where, you know, Donald Trump blocked even the most basic common sense gun safety measures like uh, like background checks. Uh, she's somebody who understands, partly as a former prosecutor, the importance of uh, making sure we have some kind of common sense gun safety law to, to save lives. So on issue after issue after issue, and I know, you know, there's, there's more to politics than policy, but I think we just got to remind everybody that they already agree with us on the big issues. Uh, and, and now that uh, uh, the president, President Biden, made this really selfless and extraordinary choice to focus on his presidency and relinquish the nomination, uh, that creates this, these next uh, three months, this, this short but important window uh, for Kamala Harris and everybody who believes in her, which, which certainly includes me, to get out there and tell the world why. Brings us to something that we've been talking about this morning. I re really want to get your take on this that um, I don't know if you saw this but Joy Reid made a statement that was basically said that if you're black and you are not supporting Kamala Harris you should you're weird is the weird was the word she used um, and then there was a comment about Amber Rose and said she should see herself out um, we don't want her do comments like that 
I, I, I don't know. I, I'm, I know how it landed on me and that it, it basically it felt like she's saying every single black person has to agree on every single issue. And, and I just feel like that's offensive in some way because we're not monolithic, just like all gay people aren't going to vote the same way. All black people aren't going to vote the same way. All Jewish people aren't going to vote the same way. All white people aren't going to vote the same way. Yeah, and you know, I, I certainly remember when I was running for president. I, I you know, I, I didn't assume or, or expect that, that uh, for example, because I'm gay, that, that everybody who's gay is just going to automatically agree with me and, and think I ought to be president. And one thing that I noticed, and I, I think bears mention about Kamala Harris, is right. Even when the president of the United States gave her uh, his backing, even when it became clear that uh, that uh, everyone who uh, anybody guessed might have competed against her quickly uh, said that they want her to be the nominee too and, and endorsed her, uh, the the first thing she came out and said wasn't, you know, I'm, I'm, I've, it's been given to me, I'm going to go do this now. She said that she wants to win and earn uh, the nomination and the presidency. And, and I think the way she's talked about earning it means that she doesn't assume that, that any, you know, every Democrat or everybody who looks like her is going to automatically going to be on her side. But just as importantly, it means you don't assume anybody's going to be against you. I think we have an opportunity. Yes, we, we, there's going to be a responsibility to earn the votes of people who you might expect will be with us, but you, you can't just go assume that. And there's going to be an opportunity to reach out to people who you might guess might not vote for her, but we shouldn't assume that either. So today, uh, Benjamin Netanyahu is speaking to Congress, and Kamala Harris is not going to be there as president of the Senate. And I know they said this was a scheduling issue. A lot of people think it really isn't scheduling. There is a real tightrope uh, that the Biden-Harris administration is walking. There's been a lot of criticism over Israel, um, and this is more avoidance than schedule. To that, you say what? My understanding is she's going to speak with him directly. And of course, I'm not privy to that conversation. But but what I know is that her values have been incredibly strong, uh, both in making sure that there is support for Israel's ability to uh, defend itself from things like terrorist attacks and an insistence on the protection of civilian life. And I think what, what she has been really clear about uh, and will continue to be is uh, that there has to be a response and an end to the humanitarian catastrophe that's going on in Gaza. Uh, and that that can and should be compatible with principled support for an ally of our country uh, that, had, that, that came under attack the way that they did. You're probably not gonna answer this, but I do have one other thing because it's just been on my mind. You are the leading candidate among Democrats right now uh, to become the vice presidential nominee. That ticket would then be a black woman leading it and a gay man uh, as VP. Um, that is a seismic change from what I grew up with. Um, and I'm wondering how you would evaluate the significance of something like that. Well, again, I, I don't want to speculate about um, uh, things that, that would come in the future. But what I'll say is my experience has been that I'm, I'm not saying it's not a thing, but I'm saying it's been extraordinary how people have looked past that. When I came out, I was in the middle of re-election in my hometown in Mike Pence's Indiana. And I wound up getting a higher proportion of the vote than the first time because uh, the, the city that I was mayor of thought I, I did a good job. When I ran for president, uh, part of how I won Iowa uh, was that I, I wound up doing especially well in in right-leaning and conservative counties, the, these counties that voted for Obama and then voted for Trump. And so, you know, what that tell, tells me is, you know, whoever you are and, and whatever uh, your, your kind of personal biography or attributes are, um, if you can explain to people uh, what you have to offer and get them to believe in you and in your vision, uh, you know, despite all of the things that that still uh, stand in the way of fairness in this country, the truth is uh, it's extraordinary what people can and will do. I've been watching you and um, you're so strategic and the way you're doing this is um, it's fascinating. So we really appreciate you coming on here. Well, thanks, same here. Appreciate you guys. Thanks for having me on.